Hello friends, welcome to the channel IT Simplified. Hope you're having a good time with the family and friends and liking these sessions. In today's video, I'm here to talk about Azure Lab Services, what they are, under what scenarios you can use it, and we'll also see the deployment steps by going on the Azure portal. So as the name suggests, Azure Lab Services gives you a lab kind of environment in which as a lab admin, if you have a requirement in which you have to give certain instances or certain VMs, to your students, you can provision this and all the management uh, overhead, such as uh, if you have to scale up these resources, uh, whether it's deployment of this Azure infrastructure and uh, any error related to these uh, or resiliency related to infrastructure issues, all these things are taken care by Microsoft for you. You don't need to worry about that. And when it comes to lab services, uh, there are basically three steps when it comes to deployment. First of all, the prerequisite is that you need to have a Azure lab account or a lab account by going on to the Azure portal. Then you deploy these labs. For example, if you have to deploy these resources for 10, 10 students, then you will deploy 10 instances and each user will have its own instance. And uh, then you can specify which user has access to uh, these machines. And once this is deployed and once they are done with the project, you can just click on a button, delete these resources, and you only pay for how long these services are running. Now, having said that, when it comes to lab services, there is also very similar services that you might come across uh, when it comes to deployment on the Azure. So this is Azure lab services on which we are concentrating today. Then you also have a dev test lab. Now, both these services share some, uh, you know, similar things between the two. But uh, if I have to say, what are the difference between the two? Now, from the Azure infrastructure and provisioning perspective, and from the management perspective in Azure Lab, that the one that we're concentrating today is managed by the service for you. So you don't need to worry about that. But in DevTest Lab, that management is uh, done by you. So as an administrator, it's your responsibility. That's one difference. Other difference is, from the resi resiliency, I will say, of uh, infrastructure issues. So any issues related to that service under the Azure Lab, uh, it is again managed by the services, but any of those issues that needs to be taken care by you under the DevTest Lab. And the third difference I can point out here is that when it comes to Azure Lab, there is no option of Azure Resource Manager no, or, or uh, ARM deployment. Uh, within Azure Lab, but uh, in DevTest Lab, that option is available. And also fourth difference, if I have to point out, when it comes to Azure Lab, one of the prerequisites is that you need to create a lab account, which is not required when we talk about Dev and Test Lab. But today, as I said that, we're going to concentrate on Azure Lab Services. And uh, as you can see on the, on the definition here that uh, as of right now, it is uh, for classroom kind of uh, environment. Uh, it is perfect for those kind of scenarios. So with that in place, actually, let me just go on to the Azure portal to give you an idea about where you're going to find this service. So as you can see, I'm logged into my Azure portal. To find the service, I can just type in lab and go to this page. And first thing that you need to do is to create a lab account. Right, so let me just go here and creating a lab account is pretty straightforward. You need to give a name for the lab uh, account. So let's say Girish Lab. Pick your subscription. You can deploy under whichever resource group you want. Pick the location. So I'm going to deploy this in Canada Central. And uh, under the advanced category, you have some more options. Now you can bring your own image if you want. Uh, you can go and create from here. And from the management perspective, you can specify, for example, the machine will be disconnected if it is idle or you can shut down the machine at specific time. So all those things are possible here. Also, if you want to connect these machines to a specific virtual network, you can also peer that by specifying over here. And this, if you don't do it from here, once these labs are provisioned, you can also go and tweak it after this is done, but uh, all these capabilities are there. 
So as you can see, I have already created a lab account with the name Girish Lab. So if I can go and expand this, you can see I get some more capabilities here. So under the overview button, specify under which resource group it is deployed, the location, subscription. Uh, I have the access control. I can specify who has complete like owner or contributor kind of access. I can also diagnose and solve problem from here. If you go under the lab settings, here you can even, as I said that, uh, the thing that I was showing you before, you can specify and you can manage right from here, right? You can specify the pairing, so all those things can be done here. Under the policy, I can create my own image by going into the shared image gallery, as you can see, or I can use the images from marketplace. So you can see, that I have specified specific images only that I can use, for example, CentOS or Windows Server 2019 data center, I have Windows 10. So these are enabled and I have specific images which are disabled. So they won't be able to, or as an admin, uh, these images are not there to be uh, deployed as a, as a virtual machine, right? But here you can see that you can, you can manage. So if I want to say, for example, uh, disable this uh, selected image of CentOS, I can do that. If I want to enable any specific image, right, I can I can do that too. So all these capabilities and control, I can get it from here. But as you can see, we just created a lab account. So that is the first step. So just going back to the overview button, the next step is to create the lab, right? And you can go under the overview and you can select just create the lab button and uh, it will open this uh, uh, a new tab for you. And you can see I have already provisioned one lab with the name Girish Lab. So uh, I should have given some other, lab, uh, other name, I believe, but the uh, uh, name of my account is also Girish Lab and the name I've also given Girish Lab too. But if you want to create a new lab, I can just come over here and click on the add button. I can give the name for this, so say ITS, lab which image i want to pick and this is very important right which virtual machine size you use and you can see i have different option i have small medium and this is going to be important because this is where your cost is going to come uh, come from i can also show on uh, available uh, sizes because it's a it's a restricted account i don't have all the options available but in case your student requires like GPU accelerated or they're, they're doing a project related in which they want a graphic intensive workload, you can also deploy those uh, machines over here. But this way your cost going to come from and you can specify which location you want to use, right? And then you can also uh, give the username and the password. Now, I'm just going to give a username here and a password. Now this can be used for all the virtual machine. If you don't select this, uh, then each student will be prompted for a new password at the login time, right? But I've just given the username and password just to show you. And uh, you can specify over here for how many hours each user will be able to use it. So in this case, the default is 10, you can always uh, tweak it. And you can also specify what time is shut down and disconnect, all those things. And once you click on the finish button, is going to take 20, 30 minutes on an average and says over here that uh, it will take some time. And uh, you will see your lab will appear over here. So it is with the name Girish Lab. And if I just go and uh, go inside this lab, you can see I get the dashboard template, virtual machine pool. I can specify the users and I can also configure the schedule. Now under the dashboard, I get information about the cost and billing, the overview, Right now, I've only got one machine within the uh, within the pool. If you want, you can always add more machines over here, right? So you can increase the number based on the number of students that you want, right? You can uh, you can add it over here. You can start and stop the machines from here, right? So you can see that it was stopped. So I'm just starting the machine over here. So that can be done now. Another thing which is going to be very important is to give access to the users. Now that can be done from the user tab. And if you have uh, you know, a big group of users, 
you can click and add user and you can upload the CSV file or you can just add by email address, right? So I can just go and provide the email address to which I want to give access to this lab. And you will click on the add button and once that is done, your user will appear over here. So you can see that I've already added one user for the sake of time here and it is already registered. Actually, one thing I forgot to tell you is that uh, you need to publish the lab, right? So the person will not be able to access any lab if it is not published. And you can see under the template, you can go and publish this app to make it visible for your users. So this is going to be very important before you give access to the users. So let's go in, going back to the user tab. Now, once you have added the user, you can go and invite this user by going into this envelope button. And you can say or write a message here that uh, in this case, the name of the student is uh, Manu. So let's say, please. So this will give a message, personalized message in their email. And uh, once you send this, what I've done is, I'll just show you how the, how the flow going to be. So you can see that I sent this message to this user and uh, hello Manu, please register for the lab using the link and they can click on this register for this lab and uh, just put in their information. So if I just go and click on this, it will ask for your email address and uh, because I'm already uh, logged in, it will give you information like this over here, right? And uh, you can see that I've used almost 20 minutes uh, of the 10 hours that has been given access to this user. And if I expand these three dots, I can get the RDP information. I can just copy and I can just open the RDP session onto this, uh, on this machine and just paste that uh, information and click on the connect button and provide the account information, like uh, provide the name of the uh, user and the, and the password and uh, click on the OK button. If I remember the password correctly, and you can see that now they are logging into the machine which has been provisioned to them, right? And then now they can do their work over here, right? They can do their project. And uh, once that is done, uh, or whatever time access they have been given, you can go into the Azure environment and then you can just one click and delete this. But this will give them, you can see the flow end to end, how you can spin up these kind of uh, uh, resources and give access in a classroom style uh, for your student and uh, make the management far more easier for you as a lab admin. So this was a quick uh, overview of uh, Azure Lab Services, how you can access it and uh, how you can create and manage it and give access to your student. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.